If you die in a state of mortal sin, you'll go to hell. Well, to somewhat degree, that is correct. If it's a mortal sin and you die doing that, definitely very hard to make it to heaven. <laughs> You're going to go to hell. But this is why the Lord Jesus came. Because the Lord knew everyone was going to hell. From the first Adam to the last human being that comes to the face of this planet. Every human being would have ended up in hell if it wasn't for the Lord Jesus. The Lord came. He paid the price on our behalf. He took our sins upon himself, nailed it on the cross and died on our behalf. He paid the price and said, whoever accepts the Lord by the grace of God, by the mercy of the Lord, by the precious blood which he shed on Calvary on the cross, you will be saved if you ask for forgiveness. You just told me here that you ask for forgiveness every day and you sin every day. Well, let me put it this way and I pray this going to help you to boost your morales and give you a bit of a hope that you are not condemned to hell. If you have the Lord Jesus, you have the grace of God of salvation and redemption. Well, I'll put it this way. The day that comes, any one of us that does not sin, we become like God. The only one who does not sin is God. Humans, as long as they live in the flesh, they are susceptible to making mistakes. And if you are trying your hardest, my beloved, not to sin, then you are approaching it wrongly altogether. You're wasting your time, your energy, your breath, on achieving something that is unachievable by you. You cannot stop sinning. Because if you don't sin at all, you're like God. That day will never come. So what did the Lord Jesus do? Knowing beforehand that the human race is incapable of not sinning, he came and he said, Accept me as your Lord and Savior, and every time you, show, you fall short, I will complete what is lacking. You see, my father says, you need to enter my exam. God says, you need to enter my exam. And in order to make it to my heaven, you need to get a hundred out of a hundred. No one can do it. So I entered the exam, and the best I could have achieved was ten out of a hundred. If you ask the Lord's help, he'll come and add the other 90 on top of your 10 and he'll say to his dad, Daddy, your child got 100 out of 100. That's called grace. That's called mercy. But there's one thing, my dear. If you're asking for forgiveness every day, and you are sinning deliberately every day, you're asking for forgiveness, the Lord will not hear. If you come in here and say, Lord, forgive me, and you are going out knowing, knowing for sure you're going out to do something wrong deliberately, the Lord cannot help you. But if you are sinning indirectly, you haven't planned for it, you haven't plotted for it and you went out tr hoping that you'll be fine and something comes out of nowhere and makes you fall you go back and ask for forgiveness the Lord will forgive you but if you go out deliberately doing something wrong knowing that this is wrong in the sight of God yet knowing this and you're still doing it how can the Lord forgive you Impossible. You need to ask for repentance from the heart. And you need to mean it. And you need to do your best by the grace of God not to make a mistake. But if the mistake comes with no intention behind it, prior intention, then the Lord will forgive you when you come back and say, sorry, Lord. But if you're doing it deliberately, 
then what are you asking for? It just, we are just deceiving ourselves. Like I'm coming to the Lord, Lord, I'm really sorry, I'm a sinner, but my friends are waiting for me. I have to go, Lord, thank you so much. Doesn't work. So when you go out, your friends call you, don't go. So you don't go with your friends that teach you to do the wrong things. You didn't go, that's good. So you went another direction, something happened and you lost it. Now that was not intentional. Come back and say, Lord, I'm sorry. He will forgive you. Amen. But by doing it deliberate, it doesn't work. It doesn't work, my dear friend.